Hello, uh, welcome to this uh, Idea Statica startup webinar. So uh, in this webinar, we will go through the essentials of the steel connections and uh, concrete uh, design. Uh, it's for uh, the users who just started a trial license. So then you can get faster into the software and start using it. So let's go. Uh, my name is uh, Fredrik Andresen. I work uh, at Idjar Medeso and Building Point uh, as a technical support engineer. So uh, I do trainings and support on uh, Idea Statica and CSI software. So uh, Idea Statica, um, it's, a, it's a solution for a structural design of uh, steel connections, uh, concrete D regions and critical, critical members. Uh, we have a lot of customers worldwide, uh, 7,000 uh, plus. It's uh, also linked to over 20 different programs, both FEA and uh, CAD uh, software. So you can probably uh, link it together with uh, uh, whatever software that you have. Uh, so the program uh, developers, they're based in the Czech Republic. And yeah, so we, we believe it's a must have for all projects. It's, um, uh, well, you can do uh, steel connection design. You can check uh, beams and members for uh, buckling. Uh, you can also check uh, concrete uh, details. Uh, we will go through all of this uh, later. And of course, if you, when you now can link it together with uh, your uh, already existing software, then this completes uh, uh, the package. So the software is parted into two uh, modules. It's one for steel and one for concrete. Um, in the steel module, uh, which I will start with, uh, we have connection. That's the um, most uh, widely used uh, uh, application of this uh, module. And then we have the member uh, where you can look at beams, um, columns. You can look at the stability, lateral torsional buckling and buckling of a, a beam or a column. And we will also look at the beam links connecting uh, Idea Statica with other software. There is also viewers and, and such uh, where you can export the connection and send it to someone that uh, don't have the, a license, if that's necessary. <clears throat> so uh, most engineers, when they do connection design, uh, they have standard connections and they have complex uh, connection and also, of course, everything in between. A uh, standard connection, you you normally have your tools uh, to check these, probably Excel sheets, MATCAD sheets, uh, your formulas. Uh, you can, of course, check these in Idea Statica also. I, I, I believe it's uh, as fast as using uh, the normal formulas. But uh, the strength of Idea Statica is uh, when you come to these uh, complex connections. Um, these complex connections is really difficult to um, to design when you're using Excel, uh, MATCAD, or the standard formulas, because you will have uh, different eccentricities, uh, angles, uh, and so on that will not fit into the formulas. So this is a kind of a representation of how it uh, normally uh, looks the workflow uh, standard connection you would just type it into the design books and you're finished but with the complex connections you have to probably set up uh, advanced scientific uh, model you have to do a lot of estimations and approximations and and put it into uh, excel sheets and so on and sometimes if you're not safe uh, if you don't feel safe about the connection then you might end up avoid using the joint. So that's where um, Idea Statica comes in and solves some of these uh, problems. So again, um, 
if you have if you have a complex connection, you might end up wasting time because you have to use a lot of time on optimization and so on, or you have to waste uh, material because you want to feel safe and you want to be conservative and just add material. So <clears throat> Idea Statica can do all code checks for your project. Uh, you can do stress drain analysis. <clears throat> That's the default uh, normal analysis that will uh, do the normal design for your uh, code check uh, of your connection. Um, and you can do buckling analysis to look uh, on the buckling of uh, the parts in your connection. You can also uh, do a stiffness analysis and you can uh, classify the connection if it's pinned, uh, semi-rigid or rigid. You can also even get uh, the rotational stiffness if you want to plug that in in your global model in the other software you're using for uh, checking your global structure. Uh, you can also do a capacity design uh, analysis. Uh, this uh, is for um, those who do the uh, seismic analysis. Here you can put in a plastic hinge and check the connection with the plastic hinge. Uh, you can also uh, do design joint resistance. Here you'll find the reserve that's left in, uh, in the connection. So you run a normal analysis uh, with some loads on it and the program will give you the reserve that's left. Uh, An overall check is just uh, a color-coded uh, utilization uh, scheme. Uh, so if uh, one part is color-coded uh, gray, it's use, utilized between 0 and 65%. If it's green, it's between 65 and 95%. And if it's orange, like this weld here, it's uh, utilized between 95 and 100%. And if we have some red parts here, it's failing and it's utilized uh, above uh, 100%. So, uh, yeah, almost all connections uh, is possible to make here in Idea Statica. You can make, uh, put in stiffeners, bolts, welds, plates, cuts, openings. And you can, of course, look at the stresses and strains uh, after the analysis is finished. So how do Idea Statica do this? Um, they have invented a method called the component-based finite element mod, uh, method. So it's a combination of the component method and the finite, uh, well, FM model. So the bolts is still checked as non-linear springs, but all of the plates and welds here are, um, well, especially the plates, they are uh, molded as uh, shell elements and meshed and checked for plastic strains. And the limit of the plastic strains is 5% according to the Eurocode. So if you want to go deeper into the theory, uh, there is a, a section, there is a website on Idea Statica website um, called Theoretical Background. And here you can go in and and read more about the theory and how the check is performed based on the Eurocode and so on. So this is a fun example of what is possible. Uh, this is uh, more of the extreme uh, connection that has been made. So uh, this is a customer that has uh, checked the connection and then built uh, the connection. So uh, let's jump into the software and we will do a quick demo. Uh, so here we have um, the opening menu. Here we can choose between the steel module and the concrete module and the BIM links. So we will start with the steel and, and focus on the connection. So this is where you can do your connection design. And uh, first of all, we 
uh, get a window with all of the templates. So here you can start off with a template. You can, of course, choose any template you want uh, based on what you uh, are designing. You can get the uh, inspiration from here, or you can try to find something similar to the connection you want to create. So all types of connections is rep represented here. Moment connections, they are sorted. Uh, share connections, or you can, of course, choose a blank connection and model it manually. Bolt for bolt, plate, uh, welds, cuts, everything. So you should find some connection that uh, suits your need here. Uh, also, base plates, uh, columns to base plates with uh, diagonals also. There is a lot of different connections here. We can look at uh, one of these uh, later. Uh, now I just want to show one of these connections. So I will choose this one. Uh, I will choose the default steel grade. Uh, I can, of course, change this later. Um, whichever part I want can have different steel grades, but this is the default now. Same goes for bolt assembly and concrete grade. And the design code, um, there is a, yeah, many different design codes. We will stick to the Euro code today, and I will create the project. So now we come into the design window. You can see there is uh, some tabs on the top here. And this is the design window. So normally we move from left to right. Uh, this is where we design the joint, uh, the connection itself. Um, we can start off just by looking at the project tab first. This is uh, where you set the name of the project, the author, and so on. You can um, paste uh, some pictures or uh, text if you want to put in a description of the connection or a reference to where in uh, in the building, the connection is located, and that will be included in the report later, if you put it in here. <laughs> here we have a list of the connections. Now we only have one, so uh, but if we had more, it would appear here. And we can do a batch calculation. If we calculate all, then we can save some time. Um, yeah. Further on, you can um, change the units if you like. You can change the logo for the report and the color schemes and so on. So I will go back to the design window and we can see, uh, yeah, we will move from left to right here also. Uh, this is the different types of analysis that we can choose from. Also, uh, all of the connections. So now we are in the stress strain analysis. That's the normal default uh, code check of uh, a connection. You will get utilization, and normally you stick to this stress strain analysis. Uh, here's the stiffness analysis I talked about earlier. And further on, we have capacity design, design resistance. You can also do fatigue, uh, fire design and horizontal tying. It's uh, more um, commonly used in uh, UK. <clears throat> so we will keep it in stress strain for now. Uh, moving on, uh, there is a connection browser uh, where you can, um, the program can, can suggest um, a connection. So if, we ha if you have a blank connection without bolts, cuts, plates, and welds, we can um, click this Propose button, and we will get, get different suggestions on how we should connect these members together. Uh, so this is both uh, from Idea Statica, uh, the database. You can have a private database, and you can have a company database with uh, these connections stored. So everyone that is sharing a license can have um, these uh, put in here. 
So in my private um, folder, I have some different connections that I normally use, and I can apply it just by one click. I don't have to put in all of these bolts, plates, welds, and cuts every single time. Uh, and then we have the code setup. This is where we put in the settings for uh, the analysis. So here we can change the factors, the safety factors. I can reset it like this. Um, we can put in things like uh, uh, friction coefficients. Uh, we can adjust the limit plastic strain if you want to have lower plastic strain limits. Uh, you can also change the mesh. Uh, the program is, um, they, they choose the mesh automatically. Uh, so it's calibrated uh, and it works uh, very good 99% of the time. But uh, once in a while, if you if you have um, like uh, circular hollow sections meeting a circular plate, uh, sometimes you would have to change, uh, just refine the mesh a little bit. But uh, in 99% of the time, you don't have to worry about this. Uh, this is the calculate button. So we will uh, click that later and perform a, a check on this connection. Uh, the, in the settings, you can change the cost of uh, this uh, part. You can change this to kroners and input the prices of uh, steel parts, uh, price per kilo, weld, bolt, holes, and such. So then you will have the production cost up here, and you can optimize um, balancing the utilization and the cost of this uh, connection. So uh, about the loads, um, you can input loads on each member, the internal forces, you can input them here. Uh, so normal force, shear force, moment, torsion, so on. Uh, for each member, you will input it here. You can also import it from Excel or one of your um, FEA programs. So there is links to Sato Thousand, uh, Fem Design, Robot, uh, yeah, all the normally uh, used programs. Uh, so this is where we uh, add new members, new loads, and operations. Operation is uh, how you build a connection manually. You can put in cuts stiffeners, wideners, openings. So, and this is, um, well, uh, half done uh, connection where you can uh, just click it and it will connect the beam to a column, for instance. And we also have plates, bolts, welds, and so on. So we can try to uh, change this connection a little bit. I want to have, um, another hollow section going uh, onto this uh, main section. So I'll copy uh, D2 just to have another section here, uh, member, I mean. And I will change the geometry like so. And now we have another one. So I have to cut it and uh, weld it. I can do that in a, at the same time with the operation cut. And now I just have to uh, choose the correct members to be cut. And I have to choose what kind of cut I want to uh, make. So now I have cut it all around. Uh, I have used the surface cut all around. So now the this member will go through the main section. Uh, I can also cut it right here as end cut. Then I just have to change this and cut it to the surface. So now we see that we have 
a cut and a weld. Uh, the weld is both on the inside and outside, and I can, of course, um, change it here. We can have a double fillet weld, a butt weld, or no weld. Uh, and I can choose if I want to have it on the inside, like this, or the outside, like this. And I have to add a force, uh, internal force, to this uh, member. So I will just uh, add one. And I'm now ready to uh, perform uh, analysis check. So I will just calculate this connection. And now we see that we have a summary of the code check here uh, in the corner. So we have green check marks if everything is okay, and red cross if uh, if it's uh, failing or if it's utilized above 100%. So um, we see that all loads have been applied. The analysis uh, has uh, finished 100%. We can see the plastic strains here on the plates. We can see the utilization on the bolts and the welds. So if I'm happy, I can go straight to the report. And, uh, and write it out. Or I can go into the check tab and look closer uh, on the results. So now I'm in the check tab. I can turn on the strain check to, to view the stresses. Here we can see the stresses. I can also uh, turn on the bolt forces. And I can see them here. I can also turn on the mesh and the deformed shape to inspect it. So everything looks good and acts as uh, expected, but I also want to uh, review the results in detail. And now we can then go into this uh, window here and open the plates. Now every plate is represented in this list. And down here, it's, every plate is folded out. So this is the main section, this uh, uh, hollow section here. It's folded out and you can see the stresses uh, on that section. So we can see the thickness, the critical load, um, and the stresses and strains. We can go to the bolts. Every bolt is represented here. You can see the uh, tension forces, um, utilization here, shear force. And we can see uh, which direction the force is moving. Uh, we can open and expand here. And here we can see the code check of every bolt with reference to the euro codes. And you probably recognize all of these checks. All of this you can also have included in the report. Uh, same goes for the welds. Here, every weld is represented. You can see. Uh, the name of the weld, uh, the length, thickness, uh, strain, stresses, so on, and the utilization. You can also see uh, the utilization, or sorry, the stresses along each weld here. And you can see the stresses, how it's uh, performing. So this, for instance, is a weld on the side of the tube. Uh, this one, and you can see how it's doing. You can also expand this uh, and look at the code check of each weld. So if we had more checks, they will appear here. So we can just open a new connection. <clears throat> I will uh, open a simple uh, column with the foot plate with some anchor bolts like this, and we will do a check. And I will 
show you that here we have more checks and more results to go through. So here we have anchor bolts. We can go through the anchor bolts and uh, see the code check of each anchor bolt. And yeah, the welds also here, concrete block uh, and the share between concrete and foot plate. And you can of course also have mortar gap or, or just gap uh, between the concrete and, uh, and the foot plate. That's possible. So uh, if we are happy with the results, then we will go to the report and generate a report. So now a uh, default report has been generated and we can see that it has some project data. If we had uh, yeah, typed in a project name and author, it would appear here. And if you had some description or pictures, uh, you can also put it in here. We have uh, the materials used in these connections, uh, the member, cross sections, uh, the anchors, the load combinations. You can have as many load combinations as you want in IdeaStatic also. Here is the check, the summary of the check with OK or not OK. And summary of check of the plate. And stresses and strains. And the code check uh, of every part of the connection. Here we have the code settings and yeah, the safety factors. We can also expand this report by clicking these uh, boxes on the right and we can refresh the report and then we will have more details. Um, every code check for every single bolt and weld and such. So here we see that we have much more um, expand. We have, uh, yeah, for instance here, a code check for every single bolt and so on. So then you can have everything included in the report. Uh, going on to the material uh, section, here you can find all your materials, your cross sections. You can change it if you'd like. Uh, you can also uh, build your own cross section. If you go into this uh, steel, uh, this cross section editor, here you can choose cross section uh, or you can build it from scratch and put in another one. And in this case, I will just rotate it 90 degrees and we have the star shaped uh, column thing. And you can use that in your connection. So um, that's a quick demo of the Idea Static software. So uh, now there is a little bit uh, background on things you should know when you're starting to use this uh, uh, software. So you can have uh, continuous members like this one, uh, this column, and you can have ended members like this one. Uh, there is also something called stiffening member. Uh, it cannot uh, bear any, uh, well, you cannot apply a load uh, or internal forces to a stiffening member, but you can connect to other members uh, with it. So we have something called the loads in equilibrium. It's this button up here. It's uh, on by default. Um, so it basically means that um, all connections should be in uh, equilibrium. It's, uh, it's, it, it has to be in balance. So that's the safest approach to doing connection design. So you can view the unbalanced forces and see that if everything is zero, then all is good. Then the connection is in uh, equilibrium. Uh, there's also something called a uh, model type. Um, so this is to represent the realistic behavior of each member. Uh, by default, we have 
uh, all internal forces um, available to work on a member. But if you have some special cases, for instance, here a one volt connection, then you have to choose uh, this type. So that means uh, this member is only uh, can only um, take normal force and shear force in uh, Y and Z direction. It cannot take a uh, moment because then it will create a mechanism and yeah, you will have singularity issues in the in the analysis. Like this one. Here we have the model type set to uh, all types of uh, internal forces. And because of the small eccentricity and the deformations, <clears throat> this will deform in an unrealistic way, and you will have uh, a check that will fail. So we will change it to forces in, uh, sorry, model type, this one. Then it's only uh, possible to transfer normal force and shear force. And then it will behave realistic. You can also change the position of uh, forces. Uh, that is, uh, well, the developers has made it possible uh, because sometimes you have uh, eccentric uh, bolts and and connections that is eccentric because of uh, maybe a shear force connection. Uh, so here you have the node, and if this connection had a shear force, then we would have to change the position of forces. I can demonstrate it uh, better uh, here. So this is the real shape of the joint, um, but this is the theoretical shape of the uh, joint. This is what you get from the uh, FEA software or, or the global analysis. So we see that it is a little bit different. The connection is here, but in theory, it's here. So uh, let's say that you have a, a semi-rigid or a rigid uh, connection. Then the internal forces would be a moment and a shear force. So this is fine. You don't have to do any changes. Uh, but let's say you have a hinge. Then you should have zero moment in um, in the connection. And the theoretical uh, connection is here, but the real one is out here. Then it will look like this. In theory, you will have zero moment here, but you will end up with a moment in the connection itself, the real connection. So um, yeah, in Idea Statica, you have to define this eccentricity. You have to. Uh, tell the program that you need zero moment in this bolt or the, in this uh, hinge or in the pinned connection. So that's where we change uh, the forces in. Here we can see we still have it in nodes and it looks like this. We have a moment in the position of the bolts. Here we have changed it to the bolts and now we have zero moment in the position of the bolts. And that is the correct way of doing it. Uh, this is wrong, this is correct. And the results, um, you can see what it looks like if we kept it at the uh, node. We would have moment and the connection would uh, give wrong uh, results and deform uh, in a strange way. Uh, this is the correct way of doing it. Now the connection will behave in a more realistic way. Uh, so, uh, jumping over to the BIM links, uh, you can of course connect Idea Statica to your already existing uh, software. Um, so, the workflow is uh, very good. I will show you that. Um, here is a list of the software that you can uh, connect it with, some of them. Uh, we have FemDesign, Robot, Sub2000, RFM, uh, Stad, Pro. See uh, and so on, and you can also connect it to your CAD software, so Tecla structures, uh, Revit, and so on. Uh, 
<clears throat> and the workflow looks like this. You will uh, pick out the geometry uh, from uh, this. Uh, in this example, I will use Tecla structures, and I will use Sub 2000 for the global analysis. So we pick out the geometry from Tecla and put it into uh, Idea Statica, and then we take the load from Sub 2000 and put that into uh, Idea Statica, the internal forces. So let's see how it looks. Here is the Tecla model. We have a Tecla model. Uh, it's completed. It's ready for uh, drawings, but we have to check the connections. It's completed with the bolts, cuts, welds, plates, everything. So I want to check this corner connection here, and also this uh, uh, beam to column. Uh, connection. So I click the checkbot button in uh, Tecla. This uh, beam link will install itself automatically when you install Idea Statica. So you're good to go. And now we create a new project. And now we can choose from uh, one or bulk. So now we can basically import all the connections in this structure. But I will choose the four. Uh, connections here to start with. So now I just marked the four connections, and they will appear in the checkbox. So I will choose the upper corner of the connection and open it in Idea Statica connection. Here we can see um, the connection. It has all the bolts, welds, plates, and cuts uh, that we made in Tecla. This will, be this, this will be the same if you had done it in Revit. So, and this is the sub 2000 model. In this model, I have uh, put down some uh, wind loads, uh, snow loads, live loads. Uh, self weight of course. And we can see the moment diagram. I have also put on uh, three different load combinations. So now I need the internal forces uh, from this uh, sub 2000 model. And I start up the same type of beam link. I create a project and I import same parts of the structures structure like this and now i just have to uh, merge the column because it's uh, continuous and i also have to merge uh, the end beam because it's also uh, continuous i can review the loads uh, that i put on I can see the three load combinations. They're all there. I can, of course, have m many more. I, you can have uh, 100 load combinations if you want to do that and check all of them. Uh, now I just have the most critical ones. I can also look at uh, the moment uh, diagrams and whatever uh, I want here in the checkbot. That's possible. And these three, sorry, these four connections are now stored in uh, in the folder in a folder as files containing the internal forces and the load combinations. So now I can go back into Idea Statica connection. I can, I can click the connection import and locate the correct file with the internal forces, and I can apply it to this connection. So now we see we have the three load combinations with all of the internal forces added to it. So we see that we have normal force, torsion, moment, and shear. I will just turn off two of the load combinations to save some time. Uh, for this one beam, I had to change the um, 
forces in to uh, bolts because it has only shear. So for it to uh, perform uh, realistically, I had to do that. Now we see the same type of uh, summary that we had earlier. So the connection is basically finished. It's code check, uh, but I can go through the results, review it if I want, check out the stresses, mesh, deform, shape. I can scale it up. I can see if it's uh, behaving like I want to do, and so on. And I can go through the results in detail, checking out every plate, uh, stresses in the plates, bolts, and so on. Just in case to check if everything is as expected. Now I can jump over to the report. and review it, see that it has everything that I want. And this is basically a report that is finished. You can see the results, OK, and everything. Everything is passed, the code check. And I can uh, export it to Word document or PDF if I want. Now I can save the connection. And if I go to the check bot here in connecting Tecla to uh, IdeaSetka. I can see that this connection now is uh, finished. It has a green check mark, and I can go through the rest of the connections if I want to do that. But there is another workflow. Uh, if you only have your uh, global analysis model, let's say you don't have the Tecla model uh, yet, then you can also do connection design. So this is the part of the structure from uh, sub 2000. I want to open one of the connections from sub 2000 directly into Idea Statica. We can see how that looks. Then we would have beams and a column, uh, but no bolts, ply, plates, welds, or cuts. Uh, but we also, we of course have the, the internal uh, forces. So now we have to make the connection uh, step by step manually uh, using operations, or we can use the connection browser. So now I will then uh, right click the beam, uh, press connect to, and click the column. And now I get uh, a variety of connection that I can choose from. I will choose this connection. It's uh, suited for. Uh, the type of uh, connection, uh, the structure that I want. So here I see I have uh, some stiffeners uh, in the wrong uh, location. So I'll change it to only be on one side. And now I can do the other beam and connect it to uh, the column. This, uh, this beam only has shear force. So I will find a cheaper connection than the previous one. So here we have just a plate welded on the on the web with some bolts. And of course, now I have to change the forces in to bolts to have a correct uh, model, because this uh, beam only has shear force on it. And now I can run the uh, code check with all three load combinations. And it seems to pass the code check, and I can go to the report and move on to the next connection. So now I have the suggestion on what kind of connection I can use uh, here. So that is also uh, one type of uh, one way of doing it. So yeah, here we see. We could, uh, we could also use this connection browser and suggest one of these uh, connections that you had stored in your company library or your private library.
now this is also green check mark and we can move on to the next one in this checkbox so there is a sync button uh, you can sync your uh, connections if you do some changes to it let's say you wanted to change the weld in uh, in tecla then you would have to change it and go back to the checkbox and synchronize uh, all of the connections or you can do it one by one so uh, and a common question is uh, can you can you make changes in idea statica and apply it to the tecla model or the sub 2000 model and that's a no uh, you can only go one way you can only go from uh, Tecla and make some changes there and synchronize synchronize it to um, Idea Statica. So only one way. Uh, now we will move on to the concrete module. Um, so it's parted uh, in uh, yeah different uh, applications. We have detail. It's for checking uh, walls. Um, yeah, walls connections. Um, beams uh, and ending of beams like adapt and beams openings in beams and you can also put in a rebar we'll have a quick look at it uh, we have a, a application called a reinforced concrete section where you can look at um, uh, yeah uh, beams uh, there is also an uh, application called beam it's more specifically for beams and you can put in pre-stress beams, uh, post-tension beams, and so on, and pre-cast beams. Uh, we also have an application called Member, where you can check uh, stability of a concrete beam or column. So this is uh, kind of a repre representation of uh, how most engineers spend their time. Uh, so usually, um, yeah. The, Usually you only have 30% of the beams being difficult, maybe 70% of the beams being uh, easy. And the time spent is often um, the opposite, that you spend 70% of your time on the difficult beams and 30% of your time on the easy beams. Uh, I think Idea Statica changes this. Uh, you don't have to use that much time on difficult beams using Idea Statica, because it's a great tool. Um, you should definitely try it out. Um, so the approach to design is uh, to combine, um, yeah, this strut and tie model with the with the scientific uh, like a FEA program. Yeah. So you can see some of the types of uh, checks we can do uh, and some of the details. Uh, we can look at beams and, as I said, walls with openings, and you can specify where the rebar should be. You can look at deep beams, uh, frame joints and connections, openings in beams, and coupling beams also. Uh, all uh, ULS and SLS checks are uh, performed. Um, the results are really uh, good. and, and yeah, it's easy to retrieve good results. And the report is also in the same manner as the steel module. It's uh, very easy to make and, and also to edit if you export it to a Word document. <clears throat> so it's very good for pre-cut engineers also. Um, <clears throat> like this uh, wall, uh, you can uh, make it as a precast wall or as a cast in situ wall, where you then uh, put in some springs or uh, other uh, conditions around this wall. <clears throat> you can do pre stressed uh, beams, hollow core beams, um, and like this non standard beams, depth end beams. Uh, you can have hanging support, uh, simulating transport, and so on. Uh, yeah, and all types of 
checks here also. Uh, it, it's uh, perfect for uh, bridge engineers also. Uh, you can look at all types of uh, bridge components. And we see that the results is very uh, nice and uh, yeah, representable. So IDEA can uh, also suggest the reinforcement uh, with this topology optimization. So uh, uh, it's an algorithm that will find um, the effective uh, volume of uh, uh, detail. So here we have um, uh, compression and tension. And this is, uh, yeah, maybe 20 or, well, 30 or 40% of the effective area or volume that's needed in this uh, detail. So you can place your uh, reinforcement in this uh, uh, area here. Yeah, you can also do walls and panels and look at how the stresses move uh, in these walls and panels. So this is an uh, example of some prefabricated walls that were calculated in uh, Idea Statica and how you can assess them in uh, Idea Statica. And also, yeah, beams of all types uh, of uh, topology. Here's a bridge diaphragm. Yeah. So, yeah, you can show just a quick uh, demo of uh, this uh, concrete detail. Uh, I will open it up and we can see what kind of um, uh, parts we can do. This is uh, also uh, kind of templates that you can start off with. You can also, of course, start with blank, nothing, uh, or you can start with this. So um, let's do this wall. We can do a wall with a window and a door. So here we have it. And we have some support, support conditions that I would just use as a default. And we see that we have a, a reinforcement uh, mesh. And we have some reinforcement here. And we can also put some around the window. Uh, we can change the openings. Uh, we can easily change the location and the position uh, and the dimension of these openings. We can also put in uh, more if we'd like. And here we see that we have different types of supports, like hanging supports, uh, loyal line supports. And you can also have spring stiffness along each uh, edge. So. Yeah, moving on to the loads, you can put on uh, um, different types of loads. You have point loads, line loads, surface loads, and self-weight that you can put in here. And in the reinforcement uh, section, you can do this topology optimization. And this algorithm will find the effective volume in this wall. Here we go, and we can set it to uh, yeah, 40%. And we can see that we have um, need of some reinforcement here. This is the tension, and the red one is compression. We also need some uh, reinforcement here in the blue area up here. So you can use this as a, a, a kind of a template uh, when you are reinforcing. Uh, this wall and then that's a very useful uh, tool so if i do if i go on to the check the program will uh, well i will run the analysis yeah and now we can see that uh, the code check is performed we can see that we have green check marks, both in ULS and SLS. You can see the utilization of the, of the concrete reinforcement anchorage, and here stress limitation and crack width. And we can review the results in detail in this uh, window over here. We can review it to ULS, SLS. We can check out the strength, anchorage, stresses, 
uh, cracks and we can look at different types of results. So everything is available here, all of the results, everything you need to do a complete check of uh, a detail, a concrete detail. So if you have any questions, then just uh, write us an email, call us, um, yeah, whatever you want. And you can also check out the support center on the Ideastatica website. You'll find a lot of good resources there. Also some webinars, um, yeah, a lot of good materials if you're just starting to use this uh, software. So uh, thank you for attending. Um, yeah, see you next time.